Hungary, where Japanese HR tech firm Mainavi Corporation has acquired a majority stake in Bengaluru-based Avignya, which is a tech-led on-demand work fulfillment platform. It represents the first ever cross-border deal of this magnitude within the HR tech sector in the last 20 years. The partnership will help Avignya scale its operations and go beyond the core strength. The acquisition will also, interestingly, give an exit to some of its early investors, including Loomis, MSTF, Amicus Capital, Pankaj Bansal and Kpriya. Shruti, on that note, you have more news in it, Kpriya. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ritu. And on the back of this full cash exit from Avignya, Kpriya has announced the successful completion of fundraising for its India Opportunity Fund at 153 crore rupees. For more on this, uh, what this deal means and for, Ag for uh, Avigna and for Kpriya, we have with us Ananya Sarthak, the co-founder and CEO of Avigna, and Surya Mantha, the managing partner at Kpriya. Ananya and Surya, welcome to Startup Street. Ritu, go ahead. Well, uh, you know, it, it's a pleasure to have both of you on the show on the same day. But Ananya, let me start with you. Uh, tell us about this acquisition by Mayanavi. What prompted this? Uh, and how much stake have they acquired when you say majority? Is it just 51% or more? And any financial contours you could share? Good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. So we've known Mayanavi for about four odd years. And Mayanavi Corporation is one of the largest human resources company in Japan and Asia. And they first invested in us in our Series B about two years ago as a minority investor. They saw us growing over 10x over the last four years. They were quite impressed with our model and the way we have been executing specifically. And over this course, we both understood you know, that our vision is the same, where we are trying to create the largest HR tech company in Asia. But both Avigna and Mainavi want to create a large social impact in India and solve the problem of un unemployment and underemployment at a very large scale. And we figured that Minovi can come in with a very large patient capital, which can allow us to build more longer term strategies than just, you know, planning from one fundraise to another. So all the boxes just got ticked in and we decided to go through this. It is the largest uh, transaction in human resources as a sector mm. across the last two decades. Minovi has acquired a majority uh, stake. I cannot comment on how large it is, but it's a significant majority. Uh, in the company and but the operating positions are going to be held by Gurpreet Praveen and I the three promoters of the company and I continue to be the CEO of the company. All right, all right, Ananya, we'll continue our chat with you. But let me go across to Surya. Uh, Surya, one question for you, and then we'll continue our chat later. But Mainavi's acquisition of Avignya has been a great exit for Kpriya India Fund too. If you could tell us what kind of returns have you seen through this one exit, you've also closed the India Opportunity Fund, which also invested in Avignya in February 2023. What percentage of this investment will you be returning to LPs? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, all great questions and uh, completely endorse everything Sarthak just said. And uh, obviously, this uh, uh, acquisition of a majority stake by uh, Mainavi in Avigna marks a fairly important milestone in the entire VC ecosystem for several reasons, some for the ecosystem, certainly very good news for uh, investors like us. And we were uh, Capria Ventures. Uh, is uh, Avigna's first institutional backer back in 2018. And uh, we're really proud of what Sartha Gurpreet and his team have achieved over the last uh, six years. So you're right, along with this exit, we also closed the final close of our opportunity fund at 153 crores. We had first invested in Avigna from our India Fund 2 back in 2018 and have doubled down in Avigna since then. In fact, we have also invested from a special purpose vehicle uh, in addition to investments from uh, our fund two and the opportunity fund. Uh, in, the, in, the, in fund two, with this just one exit, we've been able to return more than 50% of, of uh, uh, the fund to our LPs. So it's obviously a great day for us. We are quite happy and pleased and proud of what we've been able to do for our LPs. And uh, interestingly, even for the Opportunity Fund, which closed essentially you know, less than a couple of weeks back, uh, we've been able to return more than 20% of the fund with just one exit. So it, it, it's, it's quite a milestone. Uh, good things have well, happened for the concerned. And I'm really proud of Sarthak and his team. Yeah. 
Well, uh, Surya, thanks for sharing that with us. Do hold on. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. But back to Ananya then. Uh, Ananya, give us more in terms of synergies that Avanya gets from the deal. Uh, how will it growth your, uh, you know, uh, aid your growth and value proposition plans? And are you looking at a larger presence in the markets that Mainavi is already present in or beyond that as well? So uh, this is unlike the usual majority stake transactions which we have seen in India, you know, where the promoters lose their freedom. In our case, it would be us running the company the same way we have been running. And, you know, Minovi comes in with a lot of experience of, you know, becoming one of the largest HR tech companies in Asia. So, uh, you know, we are a very India-focused uh, organization where we are solving India's problem of unemployment and un underemployment. And the idea is to bring more livelihood opportunities for our Indian workforce instead of going out and acquiring workforce outside India. But with Mainuvi coming on board, we now have access to a much larger and diverse pool of global organizations, companies which are their customers, and we'll definitely try and onboard them. These are the companies which have large amount of operations in India, and we would love to, we would like to leverage this uh, partnership with Mainovi and try and acquire them as our customers. So that's one area which is going to help us the most. Apart from that, you know, we're going to be investing in getting the best of the talent in the country, uh, build a large B2B brand, and also invest in technology and build a brand yeah. which can help the workers build their careers. Ananya, quickly, we just have a minute to go. Any other categories within HR tech that you're looking to expand into? And also, what are your plans of expanding the network of one and a half million gig workers and the 175 enterprises you work with across sectors? So by 2030, we are looking to clock over a billion dollars in revenue, which is going to come by, uh, across thousand okay. odd customers. And uh, we are going to be touching about 10 million workers by then. And we are going to be focusing on uh, all the sectors under HR tech step by step. Our business is such where we don't just provide people, we deploy people and we manage them with the tech stack that we have created and we deliver quality. So I feel that it's a very industry agnostic uh, a proposition and we work across retail, FMCG, automobile, EV, manufacturing, construction to name a few. All right, uh, Ananya, and we wish you all the very best with it. Thank you very much for your time here on Startup Street. On that note, Shruti, it's back to you, uh, you know, for more on Capriya. Yes, thank you, Ritu, for that. Uh, Surya, you know, picking up from what we were discussing earlier on the acquisition, do you believe this rewarding exit will establish acquisitions as a viable exit strategy for early stage investors? No, no, absolutely. As I said earlier, it, it checks a few very important boxes. Mm. What it shows is that there is appetite, strong appetite internationally for good, healthy operating businesses in India, right? It, it establishes that. And I think this is only the very beginning. Uh, second, as you said, uh, M&As, uh, it also shows that, that acquisitions like this are a viable uh, exit route for investors and, and for folks like Sarthak, who really want to build a much bigger business, it finds a great home. Sure. I mean, uh, 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 Minavi is a resource-rich organization yes. with international clients, and they have uh, deep pockets. They're aligned in their vision, and Sarthak and Gurpreet and team can fly. So Absolutely. it finds a great home for the company. Absolutely. Surya, let me now quickly talk to you, uh, you about your India Opportunity Fund. You've already made over five investments. Going forward, how many companies are you looking to invest in? What sectors are you looking at? And what will be the ticket size? So uh, as the name suggests, the Opportunity Fund, we are not looking. They, it basically invests in the most scaled up assets from our previous two funds. So from our India Fund 1 and India Fund 2. So we are not going out looking for new opportunity. So Avigna is a great example. It was an investment from our Fund 2. So we have actually already made seven investments, including Avigna, of course, then places like uh, companies like Better Place, QMath, Masai, uh, Eduvance, and so on, right? So these are all early stage investments we made back in our, from our fund one and fund two. As I was saying earlier, we were the first institutional backer in Avigna. We are the first institutional backer of Better Place. We are among the first institutional backers of Maasai School, right? All these 
companies are in the job tech space and they are addressing and solving for the humongous challenge and opportunity that mm. we have in our country on employment and employability. In fact, I would say that if you had to ask me or any intelligent person on the street, what is opportunity and challenge number one, two, and three for this country, it's jobs, jobs, and jobs. Absolutely. And, and, it, and so this also checks the box. It validates our investment thesis sure. of investing in job tech for Bharat. So speaking speaking about your investment thesis, you know, uh, like you mentioned, you've invested in early and early growth state startups in the global south across a range of sectors. So tell us very quickly, uh, what do you look for in a startup before investing? Is it the team? Is it the idea? Well, you know, where do you put your bet? Uh, this is as much art as it is science. And then also you need uh, some scars. I would be lying to you if I said that we there is some algorithm and it spits out an answer saying yes or no. Um, and over time, after having made some mistakes, you improve your judgment. At least that's what good investors or investors who survive do. But honestly, it is, it's a combination of what is the problem they are trying to solve? How big is the market? Is it a, uh, and again, we are not consumer investors. We are, you know, looking at enterprise, B2B or B2B2C. So the, are the problems they are solving, are they nice to have or are they painkillers, as they say in the jargon? Is it a vitamin or a painkiller? Okay. Then second is, is there some kind of a, a moat or some advantage? Obviously, none of these advantages will sustain forever and ever, right? Yeah. But whether there is some, you know, for instance, in the case of Avigna, it's not just a staffing solution. They've got a very interesting technology platform sure. that is able to do the things that he was talking about okay. without changing code. Go from construction to retail to, you know, what have you, across industry. All right, and Surya. the third most important is team. Absolutely. And, you know, one final question before I let you go. Uh, I want to talk to you about generative AI. You know, the technology has impacted more people more quickly. You're working across over 350 portfolio companies to accelerate the adoption of generative AI. If you could quickly elaborate on the Gen AI strategy that startups now must have, irrespective of the sector of investment. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much. This is, a, uh, you know, core and central to our investment thesis and strategy. Uh, um, one word which is very important, at least in our work, is applied. Applied generative AI. So we are not folks who are going to invest in large language models, foundational models, tools, hardware, GPUs. No, that's all the stuff that the incumbents in Silicon Valley do. Okay, the Microsofts and 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 the and the venture capitalists sitting in Silicon Valley do. What we will do because of our access, our two of my partners are in uh, uh, Seattle. We have access to the best minds in Microsoft, Google, academia in the US and so on. So we can bring all that technology to bear. And what we will do and where we invest is in companies along in these core sectors of job tech, fintech, edtech, agri, SaaS, what have you, that can apply Gen AI right, profitably in order to either reduce costs, improve their product value proposition, or build businesses that could not have been built without Gen AI. Because for instance, dramatically improve the TAM through tra automatic translations. So we are folks who are applying Gen AI okay. to businesses in the core sectors. And we've been told we're the only venture capital firm, and we've heard this from you know the Microsoft sure. and the Google world, who actually have invested in product development teams as a venture firm. Okay, we Surya, we are, eight -person team. We, are, we are unfortunately running out of time, but uh, many thanks for joining us on Startup Street today and wish you the very best with this India Opportunity Fund and, of course, for a rewarding exit. Many congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. With that, it's time for us to head into a short break. But coming up, Ecozen raised $30 million in a mix of equity and debt. We put the company's founder on the hot seat to discuss their growth plans. Stay tuned.